In this video, we're going to be looking at drawing gradient functions. It's important that you've watched the videos on differentiation first. In particular, looking at stationary points, sometimes known as turning points. And it's important that you have a good understanding of gradients. Okay, so here I've got a function and it's the graph of x cubed. What we can do is differentiate it, and that gives us 3x squared. And you should be able to do that comfortably. And now we can draw the graph of 3x squared. So what did we do? We differentiated it to get the gradient function. Because remember, the first differentiation is known as the gradient function. So we got the gradient function, and then we drew the gradient function. So here we've got the function, and also we've got the gradient function. So we've drawn both. However, in this topic, you need to be able to look at simply the graph without the equation and draw the gradient function by just looking at the graph without knowing the actual equations. So you won't be able to differentiate it, see what the equation looks like and draw it. And I'm going to show you how to look at the graph and start drawing the gradient function simply from the graph. So you'll have something like this. This is a cubic graph. And this is how the gradient function of it would look like. And we're going to practice how to do this in this video, looking at the function and drawing the gradient function without having the equations. Before we do that, I just want you to look at some stationary points. Remember, stationary points have a gradient of zero. And these are some stationary points here. We've got some minimum points, maximum points and points of inflection. And these points are very easy, maximum minimum points. They're easy to spot and of course the gradients are zero. So I shouldn't think you'll have a problem with them. Okay, so let's try drawing the gradient function. So here we've got a cubic curve and we know this point is a point of inflection. So it's got a gradient of zero. So the gradient function will have a value of zero at this point. So it'll be somewhere here where the y value is zero and I've marked it with a cross. Now to the right of that point, I've drawn a tangent to help you decide, has it got a positive gradient or a negative gradient? Now you don't need to be drawing this tangent on. I've just simply done it to help you here. And you can see it's positive. After that point, we have a positive gradient. Now before that point, I've also drawn another tangent and you can also see that it's also sloping positively. So it also has a positive gradient before that point, before that stationary point that is. I think we're ready to draw our gradient function now. So we know one point on our gradient function, we're marked with a cross. And we know after that place is positive and before it is also positive. So let's start trying to draw it. So the right hand side is approaching that cross from positive values. And after that point, it should also go back to positive values. So there we've drawn the gradient function. It's just a little bit less steep than the actual function itself. So it wasn't too bad, was it? Let's try another one. So we'll start off by marking the stationary points with some crosses. So here's all the stationary points and we've got three of them. So for the gradient function, we already know three points. Now these parts of the graph have got a positive gradient and you can see that by the tangents I've drawn on it. And these parts of the graph has a negative gradient. Again, you can see that by the negative sloping tangents. Remember, you don't need to be drawing these tangents on. And I think we're ready to draw our gradient function now. So I'll get rid of the actual function and let's just tidy these things up just to make it more obvious what our graph looks like. The negative ones, I've drawn it in the negative region. Okay, so it comes from the negative and of course it goes through that cross. Then it's gonna become positive and then back to another cross. And then you can see it goes negative and then back to another cross. And then after that, it simply becomes positive. 
And there we go, we've drawn our gradient function. Let's look at one more example, and this one's got an asymptote. So you can see it hasn't actually got a turning point, or you can say stationary point. It looks like it's about to become a turning point, but it doesn't quite become a turning point. And I've drawn a tangent here, and we notice it's got a positive gradient. And it looks like it's going to be positive throughout the curve. So the gradient function is always going to be positive. As you go to the left, it looks like it becomes steeper and steeper, meaning more and more positive. And as we go to the right, it becomes less positive. And if you keep going to the right, it looks like it's going to become a turning point, meaning the gradient gets closer and closer to zero. But it doesn't quite get there, remember. It doesn't actually turn into a turning point. Get rid of that graph. And now we're ready to draw our gradient function. I'm just going to move this up and down to help you get an idea of it. So I'll put the very positive high in the positive direction of the y. And then we have positive, then we have less positive, and then it gets closer to zero. And this is what our graph's going to look like. So it also has an asymptote at y equals zero. And again, it wasn't too bad. Now you don't need to do every step I did in the questions. I just did it to help you understand this topic. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.